Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I see we have several people here already. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I have lots to share with you. So grab a snack, grab something warm to drink, sit down with a quilt or an afghan, something warm, and uh, enjoy spending some time with us tonight. It's so great to see everybody. Let's see. We have Kitty, Lisa, Evelyn, Karen, Rhonda, Barbara, Susan, Sandy, Chantel, and Dee. Wow, it's so great to see you all here. You want to know something fun is that I have a new phone. <laughs> and I think that it shows all of the comments, or that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so I'm able to follow along a little bit better with this new phone. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Olive. It's so great to see all of you. I hope, and Linda, uh, I hope that y'all are ready to see some fun stuff tonight. And we have a few topics to talk about, too. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to get started. We have one more minute before we get started. Hello, Diane. So great to see everybody. Yes, I'm chilly. I have on my sweatshirt. <laughs> It's a little chilly in this room over the garage. I may have to end up getting a space heater. We'll see. But I'm chilly. It's cold here today. We had some snow. Just a little dusting on the mulch and a little bit on the grass. But <laughs> snow before Thanksgiving, that's crazy. So how is everybody? Who's ready to see some fun stuff this evening? I have a little bit of a fun challenge, so if you have to leave before we're done tonight, I hope you catch the replay because I hope that you uh, participate in this week's challenge, and because uh, it's going to be a fun one this week. I had a lot of fun uh, looking at everybody's things that they were thankful for, some really creative ideas on ways to display those too this week. That was uh, such a treat to look at all of that stuff. Hello, Vanessa, you made it. Yay, you're here. Chantel had snow too. Uh, so did Maureen, I talked with her a little bit ago. Barbara had snow. Hello, Dawn, it's so great to see everybody. It is eight o'clock and we're ready to get started. Hello, Evie. California, is it warm where you are? <laughs> Today, I think it was 34 when I drove my daughter to work. She got her license this past summer and a car. And today was the first day uh, that she ever drove in snow. <laughs> it was snowing, but it wasn't sticking to the road. So we just thought that we would drive her to work because she's working this evening. And Harlan is going to go pick her up when she gets off work. So thank you, Harlan, for going to get our child <laughs> so that I could stay here and do the live. Hello, Terry and Lori and Debbie and Barbara and Evelyn. Wow, it is so great to see everybody. Okay, it's eight o'clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started because we have like 14 uh, different show and tells this evening, and I think there's five topics. So I totally understand if y'all have to leave before we're done, but I so hope that you come back for the replay. Before we get started tonight, I just want to give a huge shout out to Miss Maureen, who volunteered to be our group moderator. Uh, so between our group page here, the Creative Crew Group, and then my business page, Lisa Cape and Quilts, and then uh, my email, and then YouTube, I've been so super swamped. And while I love being busy and I love having something, you know, to keep me going, I like working under pressure. Uh, it is a lot to keep up with. And so I have a huge weight lifted off my shoulders with Maureen being a moderator. She's gonna keep an eye on our group page for us during the day. Of course, I like to drop in several times throughout the day and just see what everybody's doing. <laughs> but
But uh, yes, she's going to keep an eye out like a security measure for our group just to make sure that everything runs smoothly and that there are no issues. And so thank you so much, Maureen. It means a lot to me. And I'm just so thankful. So a sh shout out to Maureen as we get started tonight. And uh, just a little bit of a change. Instead of the slideshow, we're now going to call it the show and tell because I feel like some things we may not have anything to show, but we have some news to tell. <laughs> so that part of our little show is going to be called show and tell instead of slideshow. <laughs> so it is after eight and we're going to go ahead and get started because I think we might be here for a little while this evening with everybody's show and tells. I was so happy that everybody wanted to share something tonight. And if I happen to miss any of your post from that post, from that announcement today, I am so sorry. There were like 101 comments in that post and I think I got everybody's stuff. But there were several conversations going on in there and it's very possible I might have missed you. If I did, just know that I did not mean to. But I'm thinking I got everybody in there. <laughs> okay, so let's switch some screens around as we get started with our show and tell. So like I mentioned, let's see, we have 14 different show and tell items to share with you tonight. I hope I'm, that I can keep everything straight. <laughs> We'll see. Let's see. All right, let's go to the very beginning. Y'all have a snack, something y'all can sit down with as we share this stuff? Something warm to drink? Okay, so first we're gonna start with Miss Debbie and she has something to tell, some news. She has been busy cleaning her craft room. Now, on this program that I'm doing our live show with, I don't see how I can add a video. But Debbie shared a video on our page. She's been working in her craft room, getting everything straight, getting it all organized. I'm so happy for you, Debbie. So if you wanna check out Debbie's craft room renovation, make sure to check out the video. It's listed on our page. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed your videos because I love looking at all of the random stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun to look at all of your crafting stuff. And uh, believe it or not, you'll eventually get through everything and get it all organized. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy for you, Debbie. Y'all make sure to check out Debbie's video. And I think she posted an update video if I'm not wrong. Maybe I am, but uh, yes, that's a lot of fun. I'm so happy for you, Debbie, that you're getting your room organized. And imagine how productive you will be once everything is all put into organized space. So you'll have to keep us updated and let us know how all of that is going. I hope you do. And then we have some news from Tammy. Tammy says, I have put all my fabric on comic book boards and color coded it. So I guess that's what Miss Tammy is up to this past week. And so, you know what, Debbie, that's a great idea. If you have some fabric and you want to organize it, is the comic book boards. I've seen so many people do that. And it's such a great way to organize and display your fabric if you want to leave it out. And uh, Tammy has color coded her fabric as well. So Tammy, where did you get your comic book boards? We would love to know. And we would love to see pictures. I did not see a picture. If you posted one, I did not see it. But we would love to see what your fabric looks like all organized and color coded. <laughs> right? Who wants to see Tammy's fabrics? Raise your hand. 
I know I do. Thank you so much, Tammy, for giving us an update and letting us know what you've been up to. Let's see. We are going to move to Miss Mandy. Let me pull up Mandy's photo so that you can look at it at the same time that we are talking because you do not want to miss this quilt. Mandy said, finish this rag quilt for my dad's Christmas present. This looks exactly like his cat and I cannot wait to see his face when he opens it. I think this is fantastic. It looks like a cat that used to come visit our house, our house in Hampton. Uh, it must have been a neighbor's cat, but it looks just like that cat. So I cannot wait for Christmas when your dad gets this quilt. I'm hoping, Mandy, that you take some pictures of him and his quilt, that you share that with us, because I think that's one of the most funnest parts of the reveal is getting the photos of people with their quilts. And so please keep us updated. The hardest part of all of this is now waiting until Christmas. <laughs> And uh, if you're like my daughter, you'll give hints, you'll give it away, you'll give it to them before Christmas. Try not to do that. Hold off, be patient, but take pictures when you're done. We cannot wait to see them. He's going to love that. I love rag quilts. They're some of my favorite. And uh, also, where did you get the cat fabric? It's super cute. Yes, it looks just like a, uh, a cat that used to come visit us. At, actually, here's something weird. In my Facebook memories for today is a video of that cat on my back porch asking to come in the house. Isn't that weird? That is so weird. I didn't share it. Maybe I should go back and share it. Thank you so much, Mandy, for sharing your quilt. Uh, what else? Are you working on? Is this it? Are you done? And uh, yeah, I hope you share pictures when you're uh, when he opens it up. Maybe a video too, but you don't have to do the video. It is hard to keep a secret. <laughs> That's one of the hardest parts about uh, Christmas is waiting. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Donna just finished up a quilt too. Let's take a look at what she just did. Donna says, I love your group. We love you, Donna. We're so glad you're here. Here's a quilt that I just finished. So this looks like, I wanted to say a Harley Davidson quilt. Are all of the shirts Harley Davidson t-shirts? I'm thinking that they might be. So how big is this, Donna? I love the sashing and the little cornerstones to separate the blocks. I think it adds so much uh, design to your quilt. And uh, so you'll have to let us know more information. Donna, is this your first t-shirt quilt? Did you like making it? And will you make more? And the size. Yeah, that looks like so much fun. So is this a quilt for yourself or did you make this for someone? Sorry, I like looking at all of the logos. <laughs> That's an awesome job on your quilt. Sorry, I have an itch in my eye. Yeah, the sashing adds so much design to the quilt. And even though it's a little bit more work, it's totally worth it. And uh, yeah, I love your quilt. Thank you so much for sharing this with everybody. I think we just showed a Harley Davidson quilt last week. I'm thinking we did. They're very, very popular. 
Thank you so much for sharing, Donna. I hope you get back to us and give us some more details about your quilt, like who it's for, what size it is. I love knowing all of the details. <laughs> so Janet is up next, and Janet has two photos. And I'm gonna read this out loud to you because it's a little small. She says, I know the challenge was naming five things you were thankful for, but I couldn't narrow it down to five. Number one would be my God and my church, and number two would be family and friends. After that, the list just continues to grow. But the two specific things I'm thankful for is my 13-year-old granddaughter and our first great-granddaughter. I have a super cute picture coming up here in just a second. Mackenzie wants to be a motivator. She wrote this to me after hip replacement surgery and I kept it on the front of my sewing machine ever since. Avery is now three months old and we're gonna see a picture of Miss Avery here in just a second. So this is the note that Mackenzie wrote and she, uh, Janet has this posted on her sewing machine. I would do the same exact thing, Janet. <laughs> I would post that and I would leave it up probably forever. I think it is so cute, and I love that she wants to be a motivator. I think she was gifted with this. I really do. I think that is so special. Now, y'all prepare yourself for cuteness overload because I have a picture of Miss Avery, too. Isn't she so cute? <laughs> she is adorable. I know your heart is just filled with joy, Janet. And uh, yes, she is just adorable. It almost gives me baby fever, just like this much. <laughs> Aw, she's so cute. I think she is just adorable. So three months old how is she sleeping how is mom and dad and uh i hope everybody is doing really really well i think she's just adorable and it also has an apron picture that we can look at as well so as much as I hate to take little Miss Avery off the board, let's take a look at your apron. <laughs> so she says, I also forgot to show my version of your apron for the youngest daughter. She loves gingerbread men. Love the pattern. That pattern is so easy. And uh, I really like it because you can do just about anything with it. And I love the denim pockets on the front. Gingerbread men, that is so cute. So, you know, Janet, one of my favorite questions to ask is where did you get your fabrics for this apron? Is it something that you've had in your stash for some time or did you get them specifically to make your apron? Yes, the denim pockets are like my favorite and I see that you added the little belt loops. Those are perfect for hanging little things in like your scissors or spoons, spatulas, if you're using it in the kitchen. What a great job on your apron. I'm so glad we made that. That was a lot of fun. I have two of them now. I have my purple one, and then I have the one that I made in the video. It's a toss up on which one I like to wear the most. <laughs> the red and white one, the one I made in the video, almost looks a little bit like uh, Valentine's Day. So I might save that until February and wear it then. <laughs> I'm so glad you remembered to share your apron photos with us. So thank you so much. Hug those little babies for us. Thank you so much for sharing uh, Mackenzie's photo as well of her little note. I think she is definitely a motivator.
All right, we're going to move on to Teresa. Now, I just want to let you know that Teresa did upload a video as well. This is a tumbler, and if you've never seen someone put epoxy on a tumbler and make one of these, it is so fascinating. So, in our announcement for today, if you go through all of the comments, you'll see one from Teresa. She uploaded a, uh, uploaded a little video of this thinning, and uh, you can get a really good view of what it looks like. Fortunately, I don't know how to bring a video into this software. <laughs> but she says, this is something I'm doing for you know who. And so I'm assuming this is going to be a Christmas present, Teresa. Uh, yes, I would love it if you posted that video outside of the announcement, just right directly on our page so that it's easy to find. Uh, and tell us a little bit more about the process of creating these tumblers. She says this is going to be a 20 ounce tumbler. So yeah, what a fantastic idea. My daughter recently got into doing resin work and uh, she has all kinds of different molds and she's creating all kinds of projects with them. But the resin that she bought was designed to put onto tumblers. She's making other stuff with it, but that's what it was designed for. It's like a longer curing resin. And so she's also been interested in doing some tumblers. So I would love to share more information with her. Bonnie says, oh, shoot, I forgot tonight was the live stream. <laughs> Bonnie, if you have something to share, make sure go ahead and share it on our page. We will all see it. Thank you so much, Teresa, for sharing this. And uh, yes, I hope that you all check out Teresa's video. It's a lot of fun. And I hope, Teresa, that you share more of the process with us. I've been watching some of the Facebook Live videos. There's someone who posted one actually on our group a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it looks like it's a lot of fun to make one of these. <laughs> and is that vinyl? The word mom. I'm assuming that's vinyl. How about your rose graphics? Where did that come from? I have a million questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. I cannot wait to find out more information about that. Donna says the Harley quilt is 80 by 100. That's a good size quilt, Donna. Was made for a lady's stepfather for a Christmas present. That's a good size quilt. She's going to love it. All right. We're going to move to Mrs. Patty, who has a little technique to share with us this evening. It looks like Patty's working on a t-shirt quilt. That's what that looks like to me. She says, the space that needed filling on the current quilt was rather large. I used heat and bond to affix the chest logos to a piece of shirt. I worried that after it has been used or washed a few times, the corners might roll since the edges aren't encased in the seam. I think with the stitch that you're using, Patty, I don't know that you really have to worry about that so much. This stitch puts a stitch either side of the center line, making sure the raw edge is covered. It works great. Just keep the straight stitches at the edge of the patch. Yeah, I think that stitch is going to work perfectly. I don't think your edges are going to be a problem at all. And I actually like it, you know, I always use like a zigzag or a satin stitch, but I actually like this stitch. It looks very nice. It looks very clean and professional. I think it's going to do the job of keeping all your edges completely flat. And plus, the heat and bond light is going to also aid with that as well. Yeah, that's such a great tip. Thank you so much for passing that along. Any of you who are making t-shirt quilts, uh, maybe write this little tip down if you have 
uh, like a small logo that you want to add and uh, you're looking for a way to add it, this might be uh, a really useful tool in your toolbox. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patty, for sharing that. I love that stitch. I'm going to actually write that down. <laughs> I used the briar stitch on my machine around the edges. Briar stitch. All right. Before I forget, I'm writing it down. I'll put that right on my work table. <laughs> I'm working on a t-shirt quote now. I don't know that I will end up doing anything like this, but if I need to, then I'm going to use this briar stitch. Does that stitch have another name as well? You know, sometimes stitches have more than one name. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's awesome. And I love how this group shares information with each other and really helps each other. That's one of my favorite things about this group. Just make sure we're still going live. Herringbone. I think in my book, it's called a herringbone stitch too. I could be wrong, but yes, Patty called it a briar stitch. I'm thinking my book has it listed as a herringbone stitch. So it might depend on which brand machine you have in the owner's manual, or, you know, there's several names for each one of the stitches. So if you don't see briar stitch listed as one of your stitches, look for herringbone because it might be very similar. Thank you for passing that along, Lisa. All right, now Christy has six photos that we're gonna take a look at first, and then she has one after that of a different project. So uh, let me pull up Christy's stuff. Now, Christy, y'all remember Christy, she's making some quilts for her teachers as Christmas presents, and we got a glimpse of her fabrics last week. So she says, normally I would not share this soon, but I am impressed with my progress. Yay, I'm so glad to hear you say that. However, I think my choices of the cut pieces are bland. I chose a lovely flannel for the back to make it nice and snugly. This is one, this one is the one for my literature teacher. I'm trying the quilt as you go method for the first time and I gotta say I love it. A lot of people really do. Breaking a large quilt into pieces makes hand quilting so much easier. All of my sandwiches are made and I have one quilted already. Please keep in mind, I have only made three quilts, so I'm not very good. Okay, now Miss Christy, at the beginning, you I was so proud of you for saying you were impressed with your progress. Your quilts are awesome. And I'm amazed that you've only made three quilts, okay? So we're gonna go through and we're gonna take a look at your pictures. There are six of them of this quilt and we're gonna Start by taking a look at this one, and I think I have it turned sideways. <laughs> so y'all bear with me, because I think that one is sideways. But yes, this is the, uh, I think that's the Edgar, the, the Poe fabric and the world map fabric. We saw that last week. This photo, you'll see part of her backing fabric. Yes, these were the fabrics that I said I would love to make a journal cover with. <laughs> I think they would be perfect in a journal. I love fabric with text and writing on it. That's a nice backing choice for your quilt. fabric with maps on it. Yes, you are speaking my love language when it comes to fabrics. 
I think your teacher is going to be so super impressed. I hope you take pictures of them getting their quilts. Here's another picture. So quilt as you go. Okay, so many people ask me if I can make quilt as you go videos. But to be really honest, I've never made a whole quilt that way. I do smaller projects as quilt as you go in that method, but I've never done a quilt that way. So I don't really know that I would be comfortable making a video showing someone how to do something that I've never done before. <laughs> but there are so many videos on YouTube already with this method. And I kind of like to leave it to those who know what they're talking about. <laughs> so you'll have to let us know, Christy. Uh, did you watch videos on how to do this? If you did, maybe you can share some resources because I know there are several people here who would love to learn that method of quilt as you go with bigger quilts. I just personally haven't done it and I don't feel comfortable teaching on something that I haven't done. So we would love it if you share some resources with us all. So this is the back and I'm hoping that you can see this because she shows her quilting on the back of the quilt. Everything looks nice and straight, Christy. It looks good. It looks really, really good. I am very, very proud of you. I hope you keep us updated on all of these quilts. This is the front of the quilt and where she is so far. I think it's fabulous. I love it. I think it's perfect for a um, literature teacher. I think it's perfect. I don't know if y'all can hear my bird. <laughs> Usually I can hear my bird. My mom said, I don't, I can't hear your bird in the videos. He's causing a ruckus right this minute. So yes, I love the fabrics. I'm so glad I sh saw the video that you shared this past week and the different fabric selections that came in since last week. Thank you so much for sharing and keeping us updated. I love following in your progress. Uh, I think you are a huge inspiration. You've only made three quilts and look what you've done. I think it's awesome. I'm very, very proud of you, Miss Christy. I think you have a long, long road ahead of you making lots and lots of wonderful quilts. <laughs> I honestly do. I think you are just getting started with the things that you are going to accomplish. So I have one more picture from Christy who said, also, for a better portion of the weekend, I worked on knitting a scarf. I had a major migraine and was unable to sew. So, yes, day before yesterday, I had a huge, it wasn't a migraine. I have migraines sometimes, but this was just a horrible headache. And I spent the whole day practically in bed day before yesterday. So I know what it feels like. I'm so sorry you did not feel so well. I don't know how you crocheted or you knitted this scarf while having a migraine. I couldn't even function. <laughs> so yes, knitting. Knitting is something that I've tried. I personally found crocheting to be a lot easier to learn and to do, and I was much faster at it. But if you have tips on knitting, we would love to hear those as well. I think that's going to be so pretty, and your quilt makes the perfect backdrop for your photo. <laughs> Thank you. 
I see lots and lots of comments. Just know that when we're done, I'm going to go back and read all of the conversation. And I always feel like I'm missing out, but I will go back at the end and uh, read what everybody is saying. So yes, thank you so much, Christy, for sharing your quilt project with us, for sharing your knitting. I hope that your migraine is gone and that you are feeling better. So Ms. Sherry has a project to share with us. And I think, I think she shared pictures of this finished quilt on our page too. You might have to scroll down several posts to see the whole entire quilt. But she says, here is the finishing touch to the quilt I made for my friend's brother and his wife. Full pics and details of the quilt are in earlier posts. Yes. So if you scroll down through several posts, you'll see the whole quilt and uh, more pictures of it. I had the label digitized, then embroidered it on my machine. It is ironed on and then hand stitched around the edges. That is fantastic. I'm assuming uh, when you say digitized that you had uh, someone online digitize that for you. Sherry, I'm pretty sure that you're the one who shared a link with us all on someone who could digitize work with us. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> I see so many posts, it's so hard to keep up with everybody. But I'm pretty sure, Sherry, that uh, you shared a contact with us who could digitize stuff. And I'm assuming that that's where this label, the digitizing came from. It looks very professional. And the quilting on this quilt is marvelous. And I love the fabrics. Blue and yellow, so pretty together. Yay, so what are you working on now, Sherry, that this quilt is done? What else have you got going on? I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the quilting from the back side <laughs> of this quilt. That is so, so, so pretty. So, if you have um, a quilter who takes in quilting work, maybe you can share that information too. I don't know who quilted this for you, if they do that or not. But sometimes I have people asking uh, for quilting work. And a lot of the times I'm not able to take in work at the time. And so sharing contacts like that would be good too, if they do that. So glad you added your photo to our uh, show and tell this evening. It's very professional, very clean looking. It's gorgeous. So now we're going to try something new. A new feature of this software. Bennett has uh, three, three photos that we're going to share with you tonight. And I think she's asking us a question. For suggestions and so let me see if this works I set up a little slideshow so the three pictures are just going to rotate and she's asking for suggestions so let me get that started we'll see if it works or not <laughs> so she says I'm in the process of making a quilt out of these blocks I am debating whether I want a face Sorry, I am debating whether I want no face, just eyes, or eyes and mouth. I used buttons to replicate eyes and mouth, but I will not use buttons on the quilt. I thought about appli appliquing eyes and mouth, like the nose, but I don't want raw edges and turning would be a lot of work. Any suggestions? This pattern is by Quilt Doodle Designs. It is so adorable. It is so, so cute. So I have the pictures going through in a slideshow and I'm hoping that that's working so that you can kind of see all three of them and see what do you think? 
Should she do a face? Should she add eyes? Should she add the mouth? She's saying she doesn't want to use buttons, but uh, she could use fabrics. If you do not want to do a raw edge, you could always do a satin stitch around your applique pieces and that would finish off your edge really, really nicely. I think this pattern is so cute. I'm, I really hope that you share pictures whichever way you design and keep us updated and share this quilt once you're done. I think it's so cute. And I'm really glad that you shared who made the pattern so that if anyone is interested, they can go check that out. Isn't he so cute? I think it's adorable. And I love the fabric with all the words on it. Yes, he's adorable. So you don't want to use buttons on your quilt. Is this quilt going to someone who's younger? Because I think the buttons are really cute. If this was going to an adult or uh, being hung up on a wall, I would almost say try the buttons. <laughs> You'll have to give us more details about your quilt. Maybe this quilt is going to a younger person and then I totally get it not adding the buttons. But they're so cute on there. I'm so glad you shared with us. If you have suggestions, you can uh, add them in the comments section. I'm sure she would appreciate that a lot. And I hope you keep us updated. Also, let me know how the slideshow is working out. It's the first time I just realized that I could do that today. <laughs> Which might be a great way if I have several photos from one person to sort of work them through as we're talking, if it's working. <sighs> now we are going to move on to Miss Marilyn. So Marilyn is working on a Judy Nehemiah quilt. Okay, we talked was it a week ago, two weeks ago? She said she was getting ready to start this. She says, hi all, I started on my Judy Nehemiah paper pieced quilt. Today is two weeks into it and a total of 78 hours. I asked her to keep track of the hours. I'm interested. <laughs> she says, yes, 78. That was cutting all of the pattern apart, cutting out the templates for the first section, cutting the strips for the first section, Cutting the pieces from the strips for the first section and piecing, pressing, and trimming the first section. There are 36 identical first sections, and they are the largest sections. So maybe you've got the hardest part out of the way. <laughs> oh my, I knew this would be time consuming, but it is even beyond what I imagined. Here are the, fir here are the 36 first sections. So maybe the great news, Marilyn, is that you've got the hardest part out of the way. But I'm having a feeling that uh, there's quite a bit left to do. <laughs> I absolutely admire Judy Nehemiah patterns. I've always wanted to do one. Yes, they are very time consuming, but I think it's just going to be so worth it in the end. I think if I didn't have so many projects going on currently that I would probably attempt to start one of her quilts maybe next year sometime. And I'd have a hard time trying to figure out which one I wanted to do because there's so many really awesome ones. And I love doing paper piecing. So I'm so glad you're keeping track of the time for me. <laughs> 78 hours, that's a lot. Just imagine how accomplished you'll feel when this is done, though. I'm so glad you're keeping us all updated and uh, for sharing your progress. I hope you continue to keep us updated. That's a lot of work. 
I admire you. <laughs> I don't know that I would have the stamina. <clears throat> I kind of like a quilt that goes by in a week's amount of time. <laughs> Susie said she was looking for us on YouTube. <laughs> Hi, Susie. We're live on Facebook tonight. <clears throat> However, I will be posting this on YouTube. So hello to YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. I did my first live YouTube video the other day. It went pretty well. It went better than I thought it would. I think I'm a little bit more comfortable over here on Facebook, although I did have several people say that the quality of the live video was much better on YouTube. Mm, I don't know. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for sharing that picture with us before I totally get sidetracked on YouTube videos. <clears throat> so our last show and tell for this evening is from Lisa. Now, Lisa shared this as a comment to someone else's post on our announcement. So I asked her if I could share this tonight in our show and tell. This, she says, is my first quilt is hanging on my wall at home. I didn't know anything about squaring up my pieces and total quilt back then. Back then, I didn't know how to transfer cross stitch patterns and I did it by hand with tracing paper, very time consuming. I imagine that was time consuming. Cross stitch in general for me is time consuming. I think this is fabulous and this is your first quilt. That is so fantastic. So when you say your first quilt, you might've mentioned this. Yes, 18 years ago. I wrote that down. <laughs> 18 years ago, you made this. I think it's fantastic that you have this hanging up in your house. I imagine this is everyone's name in your family. I could be wrong. I think it's great. Your first quilt, I would never know that by looking at all of your piecing work. If this was your first quilt, I'd love to see what you're doing now. So I hope Lisa that you share pictures with us. <laughs> what do y'all think? First quilt. I think that's pretty fantastic. I'm so glad you let me share it in our show and tell tonight. So that was so much fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for sharing all of your pictures, all of your news, all of your updates. I hope you continue to keep us updated. I think it is a huge inspiration for everyone on our group, everyone over on YouTube too, who doesn't do Facebook. You never know what sharing something that you accomplished is going to do to inspire someone else. And so that's one of the reasons why I love doing these lives over here on Facebook is because uh, it's just a huge inspiration. And it's so much fun to look at where you were, where you started, and where you are now. Just think five years down the road, you'll look at this video, especially like Christy, who's only done three quilts. In five years, you'll look back and you'll say, wow, you know, you won't believe how far you've come. You're still going to treasure those first quilts, though. I know I do. <laughs> so thank you all so much for sharing. It's one of the highlights of my week. And now we can move over to the topics section. I just want to make sure that we're still going live. Looks like we are. Great, awesome. So topics this evening, we have five topics. 
and uh, looks like we're still under an hour so yeah we went through that faster than I thought we would let's see for topics this evening we're gonna start with Miss D which I wasn't sure whether to put this in the show and tell or the topic section <laughs> But she has a really great tip that uh, we she wanted to pass on. So she says, I never can remember when I changed my blades. Yesterday I got a brilliant idea, but the date on the blade with a Sharpie, so now I'll know. So there's her date, and I think I saw an update. She was going to write it down lower because it's starting to wear off. I think I did see that. So... Miss D, first, you'll have to tell us some details about your rotary cutter. What brand cutter is this? Or is that three cutters sitting next to each other? Maybe that's what it is. I was like, whoa, this cutter has three blades. <laughs> I would cut my fingers <laughs> all the bits. But I see now it looks like it's three different blades. So you'll have to share with us, D. Uh the brand of cutter that you're using. Which one is your favorite? Which one do you use the most? Or do you use them all equally? Uh, I know I have a really small little cutter, and then I have one that looks like it might be your middle cutter, and then I have a great big large one that cuts through like several layers of denim. Uh, but I hardly use my great big large one, and I hardly use my really tiny small one. I tend to use, and I forget the size, it's just an average size cutting blade. That's a really great idea. Although I have to say, I will use a blade for five years if it keeps on cutting. <laughs> I will use it until I have to like manually force the blade to go through, even though... I bought blades for a really great price on Amazon. I'm still re really stingy when it comes to changing them out. So I do like the idea of adding the date on the blade. I think that is a really smart idea. It might just be interesting for me to write the date on it when I put a new one in just to see how long it lasts me. <laughs> So yeah, I wasn't sure whether to put this one in the show and tell or the topics, but I think it made a great topic to talk about. So when, how often do you all change your blades? Do you just change them out periodically or do you wait until they don't cut anymore? What uh, brand cutters do you all use? Which ones are your favorites? I saw a really neat one at a quilt show last year it's like uh, you hold it sort of in the palm of your hand and uh, there's a fancy word for it, ergonomical or something like that. It's supposed to help with like carpal tunnel if you suffer with carpal tunnel. I almost bought that, but I didn't. Maybe this year in February when I go. Thank you so much for sharing your tip. I think a lot of people are gonna find that useful. And I'm going to write the date on my next blade just to see how long it stays in there. <laughs> Cause I hardly ever change that thing. Am I the only one who never changes their blade? cannot be the only one. Okay, let's see. Focus, Lisa. All right, our next topic is from Debbie. We're going to talk about thread this week, and she asks, what is your favorite poly thread? My machine doesn't like connect connecting threads. The cotton works fine. So the, I'm assuming it's the polyester connecting threads that your machine doesn't like. So going into this, because we're going to talk about thread here in just a little bit with Darlene and our number five topic. 
but talking about thread. So one of the most important things when it comes to choosing thread is what does your machine think? Because <laughs> they're all different. They all have their likes and dislikes. And the funny thing is, let's say you have a brother and I have the exact same brother a model and everything your machine might like connecting threads and mine doesn't isn't that funny so I think once you get a machine you know the longer you work with the machine the more you learn its personality you learn what it likes you learn what it doesn't like you learn the fabrics that it prefers to sew through and the ones that you're gonna have issues with you know that right off the bat before you even start a quilt project after working with your machine for a certain amount of time. You know the tension for your threads. You know, it's all using the machine and learning its personality. So let's talk about some poly thread and I'm just gonna let you know what I like or actually what my machine likes. Cause I like all the threads. <laughs> I'm not partial to any of them except you know, I'm glad that my machine likes some of the cheaper threads, uh, but I'm not partial to any of them. My machine, however, is. So I'm gonna share my machine's favorite threads and what I currently use. And certainly, I hope that everyone else does too because I'm always looking for new brands of thread and I'm always willing to try out something new with the machine and see if the machine likes it. And if it does, just adding that to the arsenal of different kinds of threads that I use. So just know that what I'm sharing here is a suggestion and you can try it out and see if your machine likes it. And if not, you might have to keep investigating. Uh, and I'm sure that we have several people sharing what their machines like too. Just all stuff to keep in mind as we start sharing. <laughs> so I've talked about this in a couple of our lives before, and I've talked about this thread and shared pictures of this thread in several of my newer videos. The AK Trading Thread is a polyester thread. It comes on huge cones. Uh, look at the price of this thread. It's 6,000 yards per cone. You get four cones. For $18.95 and free shipping. So, yes, and it comes in every color under the sun. And my Nolting likes this thread, and my Juki, uh, well, I forget the number of my machine now, uh, likes this thread. I have not tried this in my Singer Patchwork machine yet. Oh no, yes, I did. Okay, so in my Singer patchwork machine, it likes piecing with this thread, but if I use this thread as like a zigzag stitch to sew down applique, it does not like it. The Juki, however, has no issue however I want to use this thread. The Nolting, I sew through t-shirt quilts with this thread quilting, and it has no issue. So you can use this for piecing for quilting and it also says sergers and like high speed machines. So this is one, certainly for $18.95, you get four cones of it. Price wise, uh, it might be something that you want to look into to see if your machine likes. It's really strong. When we get to our topic number five from Darlene, we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. So that can be found on Amazon. Like I said, it comes in lots and lots of different colors. And I like that for piecing and quilting. This is another one of my favorites. This can be found at ylicorp.com. Uh, it's Y-L-I-U-U, which stands for Unlimited Universal Thread. It's a polyester, polycore based uh, thread. It's super strong. I use this for piecing and for quilting. 
and all of my machines love it. So this is a little bit more pricey. It's like almost $10 a spool. I think there's 6,000 yards of it and it comes in tons of colors. And um, so yeah, usually at the quilt show, I stock up on this thread uh, because usually at quilt shows, they are running some special on thread. <laughs> And uh, I save a little bit more money buying it in person at a quilt show versus buying it online. But um, yes, all my machines really love this thread. So maybe that's another one to check out. Again, the website, if you want to go check that out, is Y-L-I-C-O-R-P dot com. They also have this thread on Amazon. However, YLI makes several types of thread. There's cotton, Egyptian cotton, silk, all kinds of thread that they make. And I haven't tried all of those. The one that I'm talking about specifically is YLIUU, which stands for Uni Unlimited Universal Thread. So I haven't tried a lot of the other ones that that company makes, but this one, my machines love it. The next thread that we will talk about is Floriani, and this is embroidery thread, so I don't piece with this. However, uh, this is the thread that my embroidery machine absolutely loves. I've tried Brother embroidery thread with that machine. Uh, <laughs> depending on uh, the pattern that I'm stitching out, sometimes the Brother thread works okay. Most of the time it does not. However, that machine loves this Floriani thread. And I also use the Floriani in my Juki when I'm doing handwork, like satin stitches on applique work with my sit-down Juki. That machine loves this thread as well. And so uh, not so much for piecing, but we're, if we're talking about top work like satin stitches, decorative stitches, uh, pretty stitches on top of your quilt, this thread is phenomenal. It's a little bit pricey too, but um, it's gorgeous. Comes in tons of colors. And again, I usually buy this thread at the quilt shows because they run specials on it. So that's when I stock up on that thread. So there's some suggestions of my favorite polyester threads for quilting, for piecing, for embroidery work. Um, for doing satin stitches on appliques with your sit-down machine. Uh, I see several comments coming through. And so I'm hoping that you're getting some good suggestions too. Again, it is really going to come down to not so much what do you like and what does your wallet like. It, it comes down to what the machine likes. And... Uh, you know, unfortunately, with my embroidery machine, it likes, you know, their more expensive thread. So, yeah, it's all an experiment. And the, the longer and the more that you use your machine, the more familiar you'll get with what it likes and what it doesn't and how all of the different threads perform in your machine. So those are just some suggestions. Uh, Floriani, I wanted to say you can Google search that. I'm quite sure that Floriani has a website, although when I was searching this website here, Red Rock Threads came up. And it seemed like they had some good pricing on their thread. However, just as a disclaimer, I've never bought anything from this website. So due diligence when buying online. Uh, but you might want to check out this website. It was some good pricing and uh, see what you think. I looked up Floriani on Amazon and I was, again, just doing a quick search. I did not find a lot of stuff on there. Doesn't mean that it's not on Amazon, but check out Red Rock Threads. 
I might be going there to uh, investigate their pricing a little bit more myself. I hope that information was helpful for you, Debbie. And I hope you keep us updated. I've never tried connecting threads, although um, they have bobbin threads, correct? Or bottom, are they the ones that make bottom line? Because I was going to invest in some bottom line at the quilt show uh, to see what my Nolting thinks about it. And, uh, so yes, it's very interesting that your machine doesn't like the polyester thread from them, but the cotton one works fun fine. That's funny. Okay. We're going to move to our number three topic. And this is from Michelle. And I made a goof up, Michelle. Let me see if I can add your picture. Y'all bear with me for a second. Take a sip of your coffee <laughs> or your tea or go run and grab a snack real quick. I thought I had an image from Michelle of her stencil. And maybe I just forgot to add it in here. I do. Here it is. All right, we're going to show this stencil. But somehow I forgot to add it to our slideshow. <laughs> okay. She says, I always feel bad to miss the Tuesday lives. Aw, don't feel bad. You can watch the replay at any time. I have a standing work engagement at the same time, but I always watch the replay. I've decided to use a stencil to mark my Harley Davidson quilt top with the pattern to quilt. I'm wondering what product you found most useful to mark the lines. I found one from Full Line Stencil, an iron off pounce pad, open to your fabulous suggestions. And so we're gonna open this up for suggestions Everyone who has used um, pounce pads or different marking ideas for stencil work or marking your quilts for quilt patterns, I would love it if you shared your ideas with Michelle. So this is her stencil that she wants to mark her quilt with. I have pounce pads. I'll show you the ones that I have here in just a minute. But I also wanted to share because Kathy gave a suggestion that I thought we could share with everyone as well. Kathy says, I use pounds a lot. I use the not iron off type though. It is chalk basically that is ground up very fine. White is the best color to get. Watch a video on YouTube about pounce and how to use it properly by Leah Day. It is an older video of hers. I don't know how many of you have ever seen Leah Day on uh, YouTube. She has an array of really informative videos, machine quilting, sit down quilting videos, techniques, different filler type of quilting videos. Uh, she does some amazing quilts. She's a phenomenal teacher. So if you've never heard of Leah Day, I hope that you go give her YouTube channel a watch. And evidently there's a video. I think Kathy actually shared the link to the specific video in our announcement. So if you want to see that, go to our announcement for today from this morning. Go through the comments. I'm pretty sure that Kathy shared a link to this video. So Kathy, I'm wondering which I use pounce a lot. 
are you saying you use pounce a lot like you use it all the time or is that the name brand of your pounce pad <laughs> i might be making this more complicated than it actually is i'm going to show you an example of the ones that i bought and i bought these at a quilt show several years ago and these actually do iron off and they were doing a demonstration of them there in the booth and they had some really cool stencils so that year i spent all of my quilt show money on these pounds pads and these stencils and the stencils are sort of like um screen prints i don't know if you've ever seen them maybe i'll take some pictures and show you sometime this week they're sort of like screen printing they're like fabric and uh, the design of the stencil has been almost screen printed into the fabric and then you use the pounce pads over top of them you do your quilting and then you just take your iron and go right over top of it and all of your marks disappear so the colors that i have are the white pink and blue the dark it looks like a dark dark blue i do not have that one so far on all of my quilting projects that I've ever used my pounce pads on, uh, I have not had where the chalk did not come off. So that's nice. And um, yeah, it works fantastic. I actually bought all of these stencils. I bought like 20 stencils to use with these. And then I have not used the stencil part, the screen printed stencils as much as I thought I would use them probably because I organized my stuff and put them away where I can't see them. <laughs> so yes, so um, yeah, Kathy, if you can share where you got your pounce pads, the name of them, and maybe uh, take a picture and share it on our group page. I think that would be really helpful. Let me keep that up. If you go to quiltedjoy.com you can find information about these pounce pads i've never used that website before so just to let you know um, but she had them quiltedjoy.com you can also google these pounce pads and find them really easily on the internet but um yes i just did a quick google search and this is what came up but yes i love them and mine just iron off. You just hit them with an iron. I was so fascinated at the quilt show that I ended up spending all my money in that booth practically. <laughs> I'll have to show you those stencils. They're quite genius. So yes, I don't, uh, I found one from Full Line Stencil. I don't know that that's the same one as this. It kind of sounds like it because you can iron it off. But yeah, I've had really great success with it. And it certainly makes marking your quilting pattern a lot easier. You can also, uh, I think this takes a little bit more work, but you can draw out your design on a piece of paper. Then take all of the thread out of your machine and then poke holes through your design with the needle in your machine and use that as a stencil with your pounce pads as well so yeah i'll share uh, my stencils i'll make a note where's my note from earlier can you hear my bird that's because harlan is probably gone to pick up bethany and the bird's calling for him. I'm sorry if you can hear him yelling. <laughs> Green printed stencils. I wanna share pictures with you tomorrow of these stencils. They're pretty phenomenal. They come in all different sizes. And uh, yeah, some are gridded so that you can do cross hatching. You just lay it down, pounce pad it. There's your cross hatching design. Some of them have uh, like uh, medallions and all kinds of stuff. I'll find wherever I put them and I'll share them with you. Michelle, keep us updated on what you decide 
check out Leah Day's video if you haven't already. Uh, Kathy shared a link, I'm pretty sure, in our announcements section. And so any of you who might be interested, uh, check that out. I also see Vicki says, my friend grinds up kids talk and it works great. Genius. I don't hear your bird. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> he is annoying. Hi, Beverly. Barbara says she's tried pounce pads but haven't had too much luck. Which brand of pounce pads are you using? Oh, not Beverly. Barbara said that. I'm sorry. Miss Barbara, which pounce pads are you using? Manny said, I was just talking about pounce pads with my friends yesterday. <laughs> oh, Barbara says, tell Harlan I went to NASA a few weeks ago to get me the NASA t-shirt. Yay! That's awesome. So, okay, Michelle, keep us updated. Tomorrow I'm going to share my stencils just because I think that would be fun. And uh, check out Kathy's link in our announcements section. My bird has me all distracted. So as I pull up our next topic, just because I'm talking about the bird, we recently, not quite a week ago, bought a second cage so that we could bring the bird upstairs in the evenings because at night, uh, once we come upstairs for the evening, he would do this. He would just call out and make a huge ruckus. <laughs> I'm sure that that's what he's doing because Harlan left. I'm not down there. And he's probably on my mom's last nerve. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, pops. Okay, we're going to move on to the next topic. Before I get totally sidetracked. Quilts with circles. Maria asks, do you have ideas for quilts with round scraps? I have a stack of fleece oval circles, approximately five by seven. They are cutouts from all the baby car seat covers I have made over the last 10 years. So that looks like a lot of circle scraps. That looks like so much fun. First, I wanna say Maria, I hope you share pictures of your uh, car seat covers. I know that we probably have several. Mom says, sorry, I can't get him to shut up. He's not going to, Mom, until Harlan gets home. It's okay. Don't stress out over it. <laughs> I hope you share pictures of your car seat covers, Maria, because I know that we have several people who would probably be interested in making some. Uh, so what I did this morning is I went through Google and that's always, you know, I say YouTube, Google, Pinterest, all wonderful ways of finding ideas for projects. And I found some circles quilts and this just does not even touch the surface of things you can do with these scraps, but I'm going to share a couple of photos that I found that I thought were pretty interesting and they look like pretty simple quilt ideas. The construction of them might be simple, but they look phenomenal. Okay, so I'm gonna share some pictures with you. Let's see, example number one. And this might be blurry a little bit because I blew it up some. This is from P-U-R-L-S-O-H-O.com. I did, I found this by doing a Google search how fun is this quilt? You could do all different shapes of circles. It doesn't matter the size of them. You could do them all different and just fill up a quilt top with them. I think it's perfect. I love it. I love circles. I love polka dots. I think this quilt is a perfect way to use up your scraps. You could do it with a really simple applique stitch. You could do it with freezer paper or heat and bond light. You could probably make several of these quilts with the amount of scraps that you have. <laughs> so 
So that's my first example. What do y'all think about this quilt? Here's another one. Now this is really simple. It's just two colors, but the circles really add so much interest to this quilt. This can be found at the Carpenter's Daughter to quilts.com. Right there is the little website that you can check that out if you want to check out the pattern maybe or how to make it. Very simple yet stunning quilt using circles. Now here are four more ideas and actually one of them I just showed you a few <laughs> seconds ago. So Three of them look like just simple applique circles onto the quilt. The Wonky Circles tutorial, you might want to look that up there. It says W-O-M-B-A-T-Q-U-I-L-T-S dot com. That's the website right underneath the picture. This uh, is actually pieced. It's a little bit more complicated than just doing applique onto a quilt top. However, uh, there's several teaching videos on YouTube if you wanted to do pieced circles with your scraps. Lots and lots of tutorials on that. The other just look like they're applique patterns, which to me is a lot faster. <laughs> but I'm an applique person anyway. So there's some ideas for using up your scraps. Go to Google and type in the search bar uh quilts with circles or quilt patterns with circles you can do the same thing on pinterest and you'll just be flooded with ideas you will have ways to use up all of the scraps that you've been saving for the last 10 years and no matter what you do maria i hope that you share pictures along the way <laughs> i think these quilts are so much fun to look at and there's so many different things you could do with this too. You could do uh, like the I Spy quilts, all the quilt circles, different fabrics. Each one would have a theme. I Spy quilts are a lot of fun. Yes, tons of things that you could do with circles. I hope you keep us updated on what you decide to do. <laughs> You could also cut your circles into squares and piece them in a quilt if you want. But there's some circle quilt ideas for you. I'm all about some circles. All right. And as we move on to Miss Darlene, I'm going to take a sip of tea real quick. Oh, Lisa says it would be fun to overlap the circles. Yes, that would be a lot of fun. See, there's, I love the creativity of this group. All right, we're going to talk about thread again with Miss Darlene uh, and more so about uh, some issues that she's having. And we're going to take a look at some suggestions that I have. And I'm hoping that if you have any suggestions for Darlene that you share in the comment section because uh, the more minds that come together and pull together ideas, the better. And I might have left something out more times so I usually do. Okay, so Darlene says, Hi Lisa, I have been struggling with what I assume is a tension problem. However, I'm stumped. When I'm using my long arm, I get the tension adjusted to what I think is good. I started sewing and everything looks great. Then every little while, maybe once or twice every couple of passes, I get a little nest on the back. I have cleaned out the bobbin area, wound fresh bobbins. I'm using the AK thread you recommended with a new needle. Any ideas? Okay, first, 
let's go to your machine because it might be that your machine just doesn't like the thread and that's a very huge possibility again you know we were just talking about that a minute ago all of our machines prefer different threads and even if you have a nolting pro series 24 just like i do your machine just might not like it uh you know they're all different but i'm going to give you a couple suggestions to think about before you totally ditch the ak thread altogether okay and that these are some of the things that i'm going to recommend that you try before just chunking out that thread and going on to something new you might have to do that but let's try out a few things before you do okay one of the things that I found really helpful with my long arm, actually you can use this with regular uh, sewing machine bobbins as well because you can get it in an M class and L style bobbins. Okay, it'll fit both the large and the small bobbins. It's the TOA uh, tension gauge. <clears throat> I bought mine on Amazon. If you Google search it, there's several different places you can purchase one of these, but you put your bobbin right in there. You run your thread through the thread guides and run it off to the side and you gently tug on your thread through your bobbin and it tells you the pressure of your uh, tension on your bobbin. One of the first things that you should check is your bobbin tension. Make sure that's right first. Anytime you're having an issue with tension, start with the bobbin and make sure that's right first. Also, uh, there's some videos on cleaning your bobbin case. It could very well be that you have the smallest, minute, tiniest piece of lint, right? If I had my bobbin case, I would show it to you. There's a little, you pull your thread right through this little slit. I take the corner of an index card and just run it through there. You'd be surprised. You don't think anything's in there, but when you do that, you get this little tiny little piece of lint. It could just be something as small as that. So make sure your bobbin is really sparkly clean. Run a little index card right through where the thread pulls out of. Make sure that that's clear. And uh, maybe consider getting one of these tension gauges. It helps a lot. So we'll talk about the bobbin tension, making sure that that's correct uh, before moving on to the top tension. that is super duper helpful again you can get it for the m and the l style bobbins they're kind of pricey but if you're running into issues quite a lot with the thread tension then it's so worth its weight <laughs> to have this and just starting with your bobbin checking the tension and then you can move on to other things on your checklist so that's my first suggestion. And then we're gonna talk about five things that you might want to look at. So let's say you know it's not your bobbin tension. The first thing that I would do next is completely take out the thread from your machine, take it out and re-thread your machine. I cannot tell you how many times, and this is on my regular sewing machine as well, not just my long arm, but my embroidery machine and my sewing machine and I go to start my project and it's not stitching right. And I'm like, what in the world is wrong with my machine? And I start looking and I've thread the machine incorrectly. Even though I've thread it a thousand times, I missed one of the little steps where I thought I put it through the little gauge at the top and it missed. And that's my problem. So take the thread completely out and re-thread your machine going through each one of the stages. The next thing to consider is the top tension. Uh, if your top tension is too loose, that will create little bird nests 
on the back side of your quilt. So check your top tension. <clears throat> and it's funny because with the AK thread, I have several different colors of it, but between switching colors from, let's see, I use the white quite a bit. If I go from the white to the black, I have to change my top tension. Same thread, same brand of thread. The only thing that changed was the color. The weight is even the same, but I have to change my top tension. So check your top tension. <clears throat> your bottom, bobbin tension might be too loose, and that's where the little gauge is gonna help you determine that right from the get-go. <clears throat> I know you said you cleaned your machine, and I totally believe that you did. However, I would go back in there if you've checked your tensions, top and bottom is good. You've rethread your machine. I would go back in with a fine tooth comb and just go back through really, really well and make sure that everything is cleared out of the bobbin area, the bobbin case, the, uh, your feed dogs, all of that. And uh, it might just be something that you're not seeing is there that's causing an issue. Changing to a larger needle. Uh, I'm not quite sure what type of long arm you have. And if you have the option of different size needles, it might be that the hole in your needle is too small for the AK thread. Consider changing to a larger needle. And the last thing that I'll talk about, and I'm hoping that other people are sharing some good uh, tips with you as well. Here's something interesting. So before I ever found the AK thread and I tried that with my long arm, uh, I used YLI for like two years straight and nothing else went in my machine. I was making three quilts for a client. One was, two of them were queen size and then she wanted a throw size, identical same quilt top, just a throw size for herself. She was giving away the other two quilts. So when I went to buy materials for these three quilts, I bought the two a queen size was like a warm and natural batting. And then for the throw size, I got a totally different brand of batting. And I can't remember exactly which one that one was, but it was different. And so I quilted the first queen size quilt, not one issue, not one thread break not an issue with tension. It quilted from start to finish like a breeze. The second queen's quilt I put on the frame, same thing, no issue, start to finish. It was, every quilter wants a quilt that easy to quilt. <laughs> so then I took that off the machine and I loaded the throw size quilt on the machine. The only thing that was different, besides it not being a queen size, it was a smaller version. Same materials on the top, same material for the back. The only difference was the type of batting that I was using between those layers. About every three or four minutes, my thread would break. I was so frustrated. And I thought it was the thread, you know, it has to be the thread. But the funny thing is, it was the same thread that just quilted two queen size quilts with no issues. So the only thing that changed was the batting. I wish I could remember which type of batting that that was. So, <laughs> I just found it interesting. And YLI is a strong quilting thread. It goes through denim, it goes through t-shirt logos, uh, it goes through layers of thick quilting material, it goes through bed sheets without tension issues. But on this quilt with that batting, I was having issues. 
I ended up having to take out that thread and use something different. I think I ended up using an embroidery thread, a polyester embroidery thread that was white and finished that quilt. But yes, it was some it was just something with that batting. So I don't know if maybe this is a new type of batting that you're using. Uh Sounds to me like you have this quilt all loaded on your long arm and the batting's in there. <laughs> so changing that is probably not something that's possible. But before you totally dismiss the AK thread, I want you to go through and check some of these things. Also think about that it might be the batting that's causing the issue. So when you're done with this quilt and you have some time, I want you to load just a test sample on your frame with a different batting and see if that might be the culprit that's causing the bird nesting on the back of your quilt. More than likely, it's probably something simple like rethreading your machine, top tension, bobbin tension, changing to another larger needle, that might help but it could be something also like your batting. It's funny all the things you have to go through to figure out something and you could be you could quilt seven quilts in a row and not have an issue and then all of a sudden you know you spend two days trying to figure out why your thread keeps breaking or you have bird nest on the back. But last case scenario it might just be that your machine does not prefer the AK thread. I hope not. I hope it's not that because that comes in so many colors and for the price point, you just cannot beat it. But it might be that your machine doesn't like it. I'm hoping it's one of the easy, simple solutions though. So Darlene, I hope you keep us posted and I'm hoping that maybe someone else has uh, some other issues that I might have forgotten or don't know about, you know, tips that you might want to check out too before totally dismissing this thread. If you need to get through this quilt, check out the YLI thread because that's really strong thread too. Uh, I almost say stronger than AK thread and it might get you through this quilt <laughs> and then you can do some testing on some different materials with your AK thread as well. But yeah, I'm hoping it's that your machine, I hope your machine doesn't just not like it. I'm hoping that there's something else going on that can be fixed pretty easily. So I just wanna make sure I'm not forgetting anything yeah check out the tension gauge there's videos on how to use it on youtube um and also i think there's a video on how to clean your bobbin case and that little slit that i was talking about running a little like like an index card right through there to make sure that there's nothing in there all right, that was our last topic. Wow, an hour and 36 minutes. <laughs> I knew we had a lot of stuff to share. If you're still here, thank you so much. And if you had to leave, I hope that you catch the replay. So for our challenge this week, let's go ahead and move on to that. Good night, everybody. Come back and check our replay for so that you can check out our challenge. This week's challenge is super duper easy. We're going to share our favorite holiday recipes. Now you can do this by typing out your recipe on our page. If you're on YouTube, you could type out your recipe in the comment section. You could take a picture of your, uh, like let's say you have a cookbook that's been in your family and your favorite recipe is in there. You could take a photo and post it to our page. But with Thanksgiving approaching, uh, 
now's the time to start thinking about all the yummy stuff that we're going to make. And uh, yeah, who doesn't love some good recipes? So if you want to share your recipe, you can post it onto our group whenever you're able to do that. If you have pictures of your food item, that would be really great too. So yes, I've had so much fun looking at all of your pictures from last week's challenge. I cannot wait to start seeing some yummy recipes. I'm always looking for like really creative cookie recipes, pie recipes, stuff that's super simple with less ingredients. I love those kinds of recipes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just thought it would be a great way for us all to continue to get to know one another, learn more about each other. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be a lot of fun. Also, you could share your traditions. What do you do for Thanksgiving? Do you have a great big meal? Uh, do you watch football? Do you go out shopping? This year, our youngest daughter has a job at Yankee Candle Factory and they are going to be open. They are opening like after dinner time to prepare for Black Friday. So she's not quite sure if she has to work yet or not. <laughs> That's so strange to think that she might be working on Thanksgiving. But yeah, so if you wanna share your favorite family recipes, we would all love to see them. You can tell us more about your Thanksgiving traditions. We'd love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing all of your pictures, all of your projects you have going on. I look forward to updates from all of you. I hope you continue to keep us updated on your projects. I'm hoping that all of you that have asked for suggestions were able to get some good ideas, starting places, maybe some good tips in the comment section too. I can't wait to go back and read all the conversation. And I have a couple of things I'm going to do tomorrow. Hair stencils. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic evening. My bird has quieted down. I'm assuming that Harlan is home now. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, we're done. Yeah, we've gone an hour and 40 minutes. That is a long time. I'm sure glad that y'all spent your evening with me. I hope you're staying warm. Cannot wait to see you all on our group. Again, a huge thank you to Maureen for moderating our group for us. I appreciate that a lot. We'll see you all really soon. Bye. <laughs>